All right, welcome back, everyone. I'm here for Genjutsu no Yohane, Sunshine in the Mirror, Episode 9. We're in an interesting spot. The last two episodes have mostly been the gang, now that it's all together, just hanging out, getting to know each other a bit better. Last time was the festival, which everybody was taking part in, Yohane for the first time, despite you know, being around in these parts since childhood. She'd never taken part before. Just stayed inside her room and looked out on the festival goers, sadly, from her room. But now she's got friends and people who she enjoys spending time with. And that encourages her to go and actively participate more in the festival. As well as the general fact that she's been communicating more with the general populace through her handyman stuff and fortune teller business. She ends up getting roped into helping other people, as usual. I feel she could stand to be a bit more self-assertive to protect her own interests a bit more. But that's fine. But then she loses her staff whilst everyone's going around together. And that sends her into quite a spin because she feels lost without the staff. That staff, to her, is the source of her magic. And thus losing it is a major issue for her. As I said last time, I don't think it is. I think there's nothing that's in the staff that would prevent her from at least performing on the stage. And certainly she didn't even appear to have the staff while she was on the stage. Although that may just be a directorial decision rather than a <laughs> deliberate choice to leave it out. Yeah, It could just be that it didn't fit in with the aesthetic they were going for with the performance. <laughs> But yeah, it feels like she's over-reliant on the staff. That her self-confidence is not actually self-confidence. It's entirely built up on the premise that she has magic. And that is that magic is present in the staff. It's not impossible to change that. To shift that built-up self-confidence from relying on the staff to being on oneself. But for now, that staff is her placebo. It's the thing which makes her believe she can do well, and thus she does well. At least that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> Maybe there's actual magic in the staff. In, in fact, there probably is actual magic in the staff. But personally, I don't believe that magic in the staff actually has an impact on her sing singing skills. And that the magic in the staff is mostly superficial or used for fighting whatever is going on with the loud noises and the animals all going out of control, all that sort of stuff is what that magic is related to, not specifically to singing, although singing will be the instrument by which she fights against the coming darkness. <laughs> yes, that sounds very ominous. Hmm. Yeah, and there's also still, in my mind, some suspicion about... <laughs> What exactly is going on with the lilacs? Because lilacs always seems a little bit off. But I don't really have much in speculation. I'm hoping we're going to move towards more stuff happening with that spreading dark, as I said. One sec, I forgot to open the anime. Uh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, because... Oops, I do not want it to be shown on screen yet. <laughs> yeah, as I said, we've had these two more relaxed episodes, but they've been a little slow. You know, there haven't been any new characters to explore. Most of Johanne's growth is really reiterating growth she's been gradually having this whole time. And there's not much happening in terms of the intrigue around whatever's going on in the world. And so I'm like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having some relaxing episodes. Because sometimes you know, it's it's a aspect of contrast. <laughs> contrast. If you have just, you know, dramatic things happening every episode, it gets tiring and potentially boring. If you give yourself a lull in the action, or drama, or whatever it is, a time when the viewers can relax a little more, then that will make the next peak of the drama or action seem a bit more 
impactful because it's such a big jump. Whereas if you know the peaks, you know the action goes from here to here, it's like okay, both are pretty cool, but this one doesn't feel that impactful because you're already expecting something of around this level. Whereas if you go from here to here, that's a much bigger jump, and so it feels more impressive. So, yeah, let's get into the episode and see what we're actually doing. Time of version on YouTube, picture picture version in the description down below. If you could, if you're watching the picture picture version, you to this video in a separate tab. More view time helps the channel. Let's go. Oh, Lilac's backstory. <laughs> and then she was able to talk. I have posited the idea that Lilac's talking was all in her head. And I've noticed that Lilac's has not been talking in front of other people. Where is Lilac's? Usually she's there in the morning. A lazy morning. <laughs> yeah, give her time to relax. <laughs> Very uh, positive outlook. <laughs> Optimistic. Don't let the relaxation overtake you. <laughs> no, doesn't want to leave now. Made, uh, made friends here. Gonna throw the pillow at it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to not come back, I imagine.
picture. And suddenly you're all motivated to go out. <laughs> Stealth. <laughs> Helping people around the town. <laughs> I feel like you've been detected. I feel like you're following a little too closely. <laughs> of course, you're here as well. I'm sure nobody would uh, object to that. Hmm. Quite useful to have an aerial assistant. Maximum stealth. Indeed. Very intelligent doc. You're interested in what she's doing. <laughs> sure. There's a little bit of that. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> People act differently around other people. <laughs> All in different directions. You have somebody who can fly. Stack them, go up in the air. <laughs> Million dollar ready to go out. <laughs> the rumors are spreading. <laughs> it's all getting out of hand. If only she was a person you could phone her. <laughs> I don't know if there are mobile phones in this world. Hmm. 
Now, what date is it? <laughs> A lot more than was expected. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that does look delicious. Yes, yeah, so all this kerfuffle is not well. Not doing well for her stealth in following after lineups. <laughs> Let's look around. Ah, oh, it's a million dollar. <laughs> Ruby immediately recognizes them. Remembered something? Is it where you found lilacs, perhaps? Very pretty area. A little shrine. Yeah, so this will be where they found lilacs. <laughs> Oh, and there she is. <laughs> Hiding. <laughs> All this remind her of a time before Lilaps could talk, perhaps. Were you lost? Yep, no talking for my laps. And a bark. <laughs> Very. Like a wild animal. It's a small cat. <laughs> a very loud cat. <laughs> Concerned look on its face as well. Oh dear. As expected. A 
But what about the cat? It wasn't that big of a fall. <laughs> And the cat is now suddenly happy. And it has a parrot. <laughs> it should learn a bit of self-control, maybe. <laughs> of course you know. <laughs> Although she stopped pretty quickly once Lyaps arrived. Played around when you should have been looking for your mum. Easy. I expect that will come into play later. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice little a friendship slash sibling relationship they have. And I think gave her the ability to speak as well. To protect her. Nah, close enough. <laughs> no choice. Indeed, she's a very <laughs> difficult to reason with person. Too hot.
<laughs> Don't believe it's magic. Believe it's thanks to your own hard work. <laughs> I don't know. No response. <laughs> yes, not acknowledging the promise to be together. Is Lilaps going to disappear? Interrupted at the most important time. I have slept alone. <laughs> so far away. <laughs> One of the petals has fallen off. Hmm. Feels very ominous. So I was there was trying to say your match didn't start that day. Because clearly <laughs> it's Johannes magic that allows Lilaps to talk. Is Johanna going somewhere? <laughs> Lila looks a little depressed there. Ugh. Hmm. So, still nothing happening with the calamity and the beast going wild or anything like that. In fact, we even call attention to the fact that nothing seems to be happening with that at the start of the episode. Well, not the very start. One moment. Sorry about that, I needed to burp. Yes, yeah, so we start with a bit of the past. One moment. There we go. And these blue shiny butterflies appear at multiple points. It feels like they're 
perhaps symbolic of the magic. Because this is clearly the start of your honey's magic. Or at least the, the first instance of it. <laughs> she tells Lyaps to become a cute little sister who can talk. And we know Lyaps can talk. <laughs> and it's kind of weird for a dog to talk. No, none of the other animals can talk. And Lyaps also doesn't talk to anybody else. Like Lyaps was is afraid of people knowing about Johanna's magic. Or that Lyaps is affected by it. Hmm. And Johanne is, yeah, lazing around after the success at the festival. She's having a, a break for like a week, which is fine. Sometimes when you finish off a big project, you want a little time to relax before your next one. Just got to make sure that you have a sort of clear end point to your relaxation. And they the relaxation doesn't go on too long that you get addicted to it, essentially. Because, mm. you know, relaxing and not doing anything is, in a weird way, really enjoyable. You know, it's a lot easier to do than go back to work and go go out, visit friends, all that sort of stuff. Maybe not as enjoyable as those sorts of things can be, but it takes a lot less effort. <laughs> And so it's very easy to fall into this trap of, well, I don't feel unhappy not doing anything with my day, so I'll just keep doing that. But the trouble is, if you don't do anything for too long, then all the things that you're that are an important part of your life will start to deteriorate because everything needs main maintenance, work, friendships, relationships. You need to put effort into them, unfortunately. <laughs> The amount you need to put into them depends on the person, yeah. Some people find work really easy. Some people find friendships really easy. Some people find relationships take a lot of energy. You know, like, I only have, like, three or four, maybe five good friends who I talk to regularly. I don't know, six. And then there's family as well, but, you know, my brother, on the other hand, has dozens of friends that he talks to regularly <laughs> i have no idea how he manages to maintain that level of friendship with so many people but it's because he finds it easy it doesn't take him energy it takes me energy quite a bit <laughs> hmm. anyway <laughs> yes and it was it was around there that she mentioned that nobody's mentioned the clarity lately <laughs> Which feels interesting to deliberately bring that up. It makes it feel like either that's becoming less important as a plot point, or they're making it, they're calling our attention to the existence of the clarity to remind us that this is a thing which is something you should remember because it's going to come up again later. Yeah, obviously I didn't need the reminder, but. Some people watching this might, particularly if they're like people who are really into the general Love Live franchise and are watching this because it's part of the Love Live franchise. You know, maybe their their Oshi is one of the cast members. Then it's you know, you're watching it more for the characters than the plot. Whereas for me, I mean I do like the characters quite a bit, but the plot is also something of interest to me. Whereas for the sorts of people who are into just love life, they don't care, or some of them might not care so much about the plot and are just watching it to enjoy the antics of their favourite idols. Mm. So, Lilaps tries to get her out of bed. <laughs> and questions her about what it is she really wants to do. Does she want to pursue music properly or do you want to stay here and maintain this little 
sideshow you've got going on with the fortune telling and singing as well. Living a carefree life. I mean, for a lot of people, that sounds great. You know, you've got a simple job that you can go to regularly. You've got a side job, which is a more creative job, and you live a carefree life. That, to a lot of people, is excellent. That's, to some people, almost ideal. But there are a lot of people who want more than that. They don't want to live a carefree life. They want to live an, an impactful life, something that feels like they're doing something important. And I get the impression that Johanna is somewhat the latter. And that's why she wants to pursue singing properly. Not just as a, a local singer, but as somebody international. Somebody who can affect lots of people with their music. Hmm. So, off my lamps goes out on the town. Johanny quickly follows because she wants to see what Lilaps is doing. <laughs> is shortly joined by Rico and Ruby, who are also investigating what Lilaps does. And Lilaps is just going about her day, being helpful, being adored by the public, and not speaking to anybody. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the case that she can't speak to anybody else, like the magic is limited to only conversing with Johanne, or if she refuses to speak to other people. And if she does refuse, why? Is she aware that it is unusual for a dog to talk, and thus talking in front of people would draw suspicion, make people think that something magical is happening. Hmm. But then, so, I thought, what would be the problem with people finding out that Johanne had magic? Because now, Johanne has magic and people know about it, and nobody is bringing up issue with that. I wonder if it's because Lilaps wants Johanny not to recognise her own magic, or wanted, perhaps. Recognises that if <laughs> Lilaps talks in front of other people, other people will point out that, well, why can a dog talk? And then Johanny will realise that something is, is up, something magical is going on there, and then may connect it to her own memories of Telling Lilaps to become a little sister who can talk. Mm. And then might worry that her magic has had a lasting impression on Lilaps that was unintended. I don't know. It will be interesting to find out what Lilaps' reason for not talking in front of people is. Hmm. I feel like there's also the implication that Lilaps is not going to live forever, <laughs> or is not going to be around forever, that she's going to in some way disappear at some point. Mm. I don't know. So, split up to look for Lilaps. Everybody's talking about Lilaps, and the rumour starts spreading that bad things have happened to Lilaps, and everybody's now fully on the case. <laughs> acting as if Lilaps is in severe danger, potentially kidnapped, and out searching for her. Yohane recognises this location, which is a very pretty location. You know, we've got this river going along, but also there's like a, a lake, I guess, on the other side. Or maybe this is an entire lake and this is just like a land bridgey bit in the middle of it. I mean, the water doesn't seem to be moving very much, so... But, like, I really like the, um... So they've got this weird building. I don't know what that is. But, like, I like this little shrine area to the side. Feels very scenic. 
look a bit more in between the, the things I can jump to. I'm pretty sure we get a shot for on like in the front of the shrine. Yeah. There's like a snake motif in the logos. It's interesting. Like a little tree, I think that is, in the shrine area. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there's some relevant symbolism there, but I'm not sure. But, and it's this bend in the road with the little three pong three pronged tree <laughs> on the right side. That is where Johanne met Lilaps. I would bring it bring in these blue flowers as well. Similar to the blue butterflies, there's a blue theme. <laughs> So I like that they, um, with the memories, there's a very clear, like very dark vignetting that cuts off fairly abruptly at the sides, but also a very distinct blur on the outsides. It does make it very clear that it's a memory, which is very useful. And sometimes you see shows which have flashbacks and there's not really any strong indication that this is a flashback and that can get quite confusing. Yeah, Lyaps found Johanne while she was crying because she was lost, cheered her up, and then they started playing together. That's a nice shift from the lonely, depressing blue to as soon as they make contact, lots of bright colours come in. Sort of rainbow-esque we've got. Reds, yellows, blues, purples, greens, all sorts of colours. And then she sees a cat in the tree and rushes to get it. Lilaps has to save her twice. And then they have a nice conversation. I don't really know if there's anything too deep in this apart from the latter stuff. It's mostly reminiscing. You get the promises. Never love her. Like, never forget that you love her. <laughs> it's a very different phrase. Um, make sure you make up with each other after you get in fights. We see a couple of glimpses of that, perhaps, in, like, memories. Yeah, you know, we montage through some memories. But I feel like that may come up in the future. What with Lilaps seemingly not wanting... or being reluctant to share with Johanne that her magic is what has allowed her to talk. Mm. Even if something bad happens, don't forget to smile. Mm. That also feels very ominous. It's like something bad is going to happen and you'll need to tough it out. <laughs> yeah, so here's the montage of memories. Very pretty rainbow effect on the lake. Grateful towards you. I want you to stay by Johanna's side until she's all grown up. Until. Is Lilac perhaps going to disappear once Johanna finds the thing she, that only she can do? At that point, will she be grown up and Lilac's job will be done? Mm. Yes, she's learnt a lot. And it's all thanks to Lilaps' encouragement in many ways. She's made a bunch of friends. But Lilaps will always be a very important person to her. Or oh, very important dog. And these are interesting shots. We get it a couple times where we're just showing Lilaps' shadow. And there's a little bit of an ear there, but we're focusing on the shadow, which is very much looking straight out. It feels to me like there's the implication that Lilaps is perhaps not going to be there for much longer. 
I don't know why I get that impression from just a shadow. But it, I guess it's because shadows feel less physical. They're more ephemeral and transient. Hmm. They're going to be together forever and ever, right, Lilaps? And Lilaps does not respond and changes the subject. Uh, I wonder if there's the possibility that Lilaps is just old as a dog and knows that she is going to pass away before your honey is <laughs> reached her old age, you know? Before your honey is perhaps ready to accept it. Because how, how long do dogs live? I don't think it's that long. How long do dogs live? 10 to 13 years. Yeah, that feels very much like a potentially soon sort of situation. I'm just going to look up how long the wolves live, because Lilaps does have a certain wolfy vibe to her. So, a bit longer, 14 to 16 years. Depending on... Yeah, tend to live longer in captivity, though. So, it might have, have a little more time. But I don't know, it feels more like there's something magical towards whatever's worrying live apps. Hmm. Once again, focusing on the shadow. And showing the blue flowers again. Lots of blue. In fact, in this bit, as Lilaps tries to say what she wants to about the magic, we get a couple of flashes to different things. So we get the wind blowing, which sets the mood for a dramatic thing about to happen. <laughs> as she cuts off Johanny. Another shot of the shadow. And a lurch forward, wanting to get it off her chest, whatever it is. More dramatic wind blowing. These blue petals, which we saw in the past. The blue butterflies, and these are in memory. You, yeah, we've got the vignetting. Blue flowers again, butterflies again, blue flowers again. And she starts to say about the magic and then interrupt it. And Lilaps shuts up immediately. And is left <laughs> sitting alone as Johanne goes and plays with everybody else. I wonder if well, Lilaps is the one who's jealous. You know, Lilaps often comes off as very mature. But if she's perhaps got it into her head unreasonably that she shouldn't talk around people other than Johanne, then I imagine Johanne spending so much of her time with people who Lilaps can't engage with, that can probably feel quite lonely for her. Hmm. Maybe. And this shot certainly feels lonely. Yeah. We show her sitting alone as we zoom backwards a little bit. Hmm. And then contrast it with Johanne, surrounded by everybody else. And a, a petal has fallen off this little flower. <laughs> this just immediately shouts to me omen of death but I don't think it's actually going to be an omen of death but it, it does have a very foreboding feel like something is coming to an end or something is or something is being separated you know I said Lilaps could be feeling alone lonely because she is 
<laughs> being kicked out of the group of petals, or she feels like she can't be a group of in the group of petals that she once was. Mm. Maybe we'll have to see later. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Lilacs, but I'm very interested to find out. So, hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye-bye!